So in this video, we're going to go through those detailed steps we outlined in our second step, this generating um, and selecting the solution step. And we're going to use these steps to find our heat transfer coefficient as well as our freezing time. First, we'll start off by finding the heat transfer coefficient. Our first step is to determine the geometry from which to derive our heat transfer coefficient from. And in this problem we have our patty and along the sides of the, the patty we have our airflow. And the surfaces which the air flows over are simply flat surfaces. So in this problem when finding the heat transfer coefficient we can use the equations for a flat plate. The next step is to define our characteristic length L. And this is a little tricky because the length over which the air flows varies along our, along our patty. So at the edges we have L as 0, but in the middle we have L equal to the diameter and on the other side we have zero again. So for this problem we're going to be assuming that L is equal to D. Now we need to determine whether our flow is natural or forced. And in this problem uh, we have a velocity for our flow. And whenever we have a, a velocity we know that we're dealing with a forced convection problem. In step 4, we determine whether we need to find HX or HL. The main difference between these two are that HX gives you the heat transfer coefficient at a certain distance from the zero point, or the point at which the flow first contacts the edge of the patty. Um, so that would be X equals zero. Whereas HL gives you an average heat transfer coefficient over the characteristic length of the patty. And HL is more appropriate in this problem because we're just concerned with finding some heat transfer coefficient um, to determine freezing time. In step 5, we determine whether the flow is laminar or turbulent. And the way to do this is to find our Reynolds number. So using our equation for Reynolds number and plugging in our variables, we find that the Reynolds number is less than 2 times 10 to the 5, so we're dealing with a laminar flow. We can now choose our equation. So we have a, we have a flat plate uh, with forced convection and laminar flow. So using these three conditions we can determine that this is the appropriate equation to use and the left side of the equation comes from our Nusselt's number or our average Nusselt's number. Using this equation we can now plug in our known variables and solve for HL which we will do in step 7. So in step 7 we now find our heat transfer coefficient and we're using our equation we derived earlier, we're plugging in our known values and we're solving for HL and we find that our heat transfer coefficient over the patty is 9.81 watts per meter squared Kelvin. Now we move on to finding the freezing time. Our first step is to define the characteristic length. Now the characteristic length L in this part of the problem is different from the characteristic length we used in the convection part of the problem. So in this part of the problem heat is being lost evenly or symmetrically from the middle of the patty to the outside. And this is occurring on both sides of the patty because we have flow on either side. So if we imagine our center line um, as x equals 0, 
then our characteristic length is simply half of the thickness of our patty. So we can find our characteristic length to be 0.01 meters. The next step is to find the latent heat. So because we're only freezing the water within the patty, we need to determine the latent heat of the tissue by taking the latent heat of water and multiplying it by the water content inside the patty. So we're told that there's 75% water in the patty, so we multiply the latent heat of water by our water content in fraction form and determine our latent heat of the tissue. Now we determine the thermal conductivity of the patty. So we're told that the thermal conductivity of the, free, of the frozen patty is 1.4 watts per meter kelvin. And this is just given in the problem. The next step is to choose the equation given the geometry as well as the boundary condition. So in this problem, because the thickness dimension of the patty is much smaller than the radial dimension, we could treat the patty as a slab. And we also know that in this problem we can't ignore the effects of convection. So we use the equation derived in the textbook for a convective boundary condition for a slab. And using this equation, we can plug in all of our unknowns and solve for our freezing time. So in step 5, we just plug in chug and find our freezing time. So we're using our equation we found earlier. We're plugging in our known values. And we're finding our freezing time as 1.47 hours.